Welcome back, everyone. It's Denise DiVergoli live here on the HN Network with The Drive every Tuesday. The Drive is designed to bring people, places, ideas, and organizations together that move you forward mindfully and consciously. Maybe we help you shift your ideas. Maybe we help you reframe something. Maybe we move you out of your comfort zone. In any case, we just want to move you forward. If you like what you see, please share it with your friends. And if you have a question or you'd like to be a guest on the show, please tweet me at Denise DeGrigley on Twitter or our friends here at HN Network CT. We always start the show with a mindful minute. And today I just want to share a little something with you in lieu of last night's debate. I was riding my bike, as you know, I've all gotten into riding my bike, and I rode it by a farm in Fairfield. And there was a sign out front that said, free manure. And I said, look at that. People are just giving it away. So don't give yours away unless it's meant to fertilize the flowers or the food system. That's my first thing. My second thing is, instead of complaining that you don't maybe like the candidates that are being presented, I pose this mindful thought to you. If there are only two potatoes left in the world to eat, a sweet potato and a white potato, you'd have to pick one so that you could sustain yourself and continue to help your family. By helping your family, maintaining your civic responsibilities. We fought so hard in our country for women's rights to vote, minorities' rights to vote. We must not sit down on this one, friends. Everybody needs to get out to vote this year and let their voice be heard. Pick your potato and let's go. It's a story of perseverance, dedication, and faith in action today. And I want you to meet someone that really illuminates that, author and entrepreneur Lynn Constantine. Hi, Thank Jim. you so much for joining us. Thanks for having Very me. Very appreciative. Happy to be here. So when a friend of mine referred you to the show, I was just enamored with your story. Um, a working mom, building a business, a consulting practice, and an authorship. And of course, you know, we built a little story around your visit today about how you've now been picked up by a big New York publisher. Yes. We don't want to reveal that yet. But we want to talk about you and your journey of running a business, running a family, and becoming an author, and maybe the rejections you faced and the triumphs that you have achieved. So tell us, tell us from the start, how did all the come? I think you also have written with your sister, if I'm yes, correct. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so over 15 years ago, my sister and I wrote our first book called Circle Dance. Um, and that was published uh, by a small publisher right around the time I was moving from Maryland to Connecticut. And I had four-year-old twins, uh, my, or my, I still have twins, they were four years old at the time. Mm -hmm. So we really didn't get to do too much um, marketing and promotion, but you know, the book did okay, and we kind of held on to that, and you know, we're authors, and didn't really write anything for the next 10 years because I was busy raising my kids. I homeschooled them for, wow. right, until fifth grade, which, which was wonderful, but it really took all my creative energy. So um, it was about, when they went back to school about five years ago that I wanted to pick the writing back up and I had played around with the Veritas Deception during that time I had started it picked it up put it back down too many times to count and I decided I was gonna get serious and finish it and what happened is well, that let's tell the audience what is the Veritas Deception um, what is the title or what is the it's it's a book you've read right 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 it's right. a it's a conspiracy thriller that, I, that I've written, um, and the idea came to me when I was in corporate um, marketing years ago. When I, I used to have a job trying to get people to increase their credit card debt by sending them check mailings, you know, not the most lofty of, of jobs, but it paid the bills. And it came to me at the time just how susceptible we are to marketing images and, and the messages that, and that was the, where the seeds for this book came. So it's really a book about, it's good versus evil, but it's played out on the landscape of the entertainment world and on marketing and media um, so you know that's so I, I will just tell our audience very okay. quickly that I am not a fiction reader and when you okay. sent it to me I at first was nervous because I'm not a fiction reader right. and it grabbed me from and and friends I don't get paid to say this as you know <laughs> I it grabbed me from like three pages in and then uh, even my husband Troy at one point and I was up until two in the morning he said what are you doing <laughs> I said, I'm finishing this book. It was an incredibly woven fabric of one thrilling roller coaster ride meets the next. And I don't want to give it away for people that, that might want to read it, but it is that conspiracy theory that juggles so many contemporary themes. So I was like, was she thinking about this? Was she thinking about that? So what, 
were you thinking about? Was it just your marketing background that developed these seeds or were these lifetime experiences woven in here? Like, where was your thought process? My thought, you know, it's funny. I, it was really, the, it was television. It was looking at the, the evolution of television from when I was a teenager, which was very clean and there was a family hour. And I just kind of noticed this, sh this subtle, but very gradual and steady shift from, you know, from like I said, protecting and having that family hour to anything goes. And I remember thinking, my father who passed away when I was 16, and I thought, you know, if he came back and turned the television on today, he would flip, he would just be shocked. I mean, it's that yeah. dramatic, but I don't think we've noticed it because it happened so slowly. And so I thought about what if there was an intentional campaign, you know, to actually change the face of morality and to really, you know, distract individuals from pursuing the more um, lofty goals or what they really were put on earth to do because they got distracted by all of this and, and, and all the situational ethics that we see. That was really it, what the book is also about. How, you know, yes, there, there are lots of shades of gray, but there is still or there should still be some sort of a good and evil and, you know, a, a line. And I think that we've lost that. And, and so the book explores that from really from all sides and looks at a lot of issues that are controversial and that do have you know, I guess a, a, not necessarily a right and a wrong, but th that we like bioethicism uh, and you know looking at choices about end of life, all of that, and it, it takes those issues and puts it into a personal story, and hopefully lets the reader decide. I mean, try to keep my voice as much out of it, and there are characters on both sides of the issue. It was fascinating, and I want to just point out to the audience: this is not the book that's. Uh, right. There's a new book in design for the the major publisher, and we're going to yes. get to that in a later segment. So you're doing all of this as a mom, still, I mean, they're not yes. in homeschool anymore, but you're right. a mom, yeah. and you're also doing your consulting practice. So where's the energy coming from? What's motivating you? I think just a, a, bel a belief um, that it eventually it's all gonna come together. And I, and I don't, and I couldn't, st I really felt like I couldn't stop. It, it's a passion for me, and so, you know, I used to, I would tell my children too, and it's what I tell them all the time, find something that you love, you know, and don't worry about the money, like the money will come. So it was a lot of years, and still, you know, not really getting paid for it, but I, I couldn't not do it. And I think, you know, if all of a sudden I had all the money in the world, I would still write, because I love it that much. So it was just a, it was a desire to know too, that if I kept at it, and I, and I also took classes. I was um, active in Write Yourself Free in Westport, um, which, w which was a great place for me, and I learned a lot. So I, I think you have to hone your craft. I mean, you can't just say, well, I'm going to. It's just going to happen. Right. You've got to put some you seed underneath put, it. Yes, you have to work hard at it. And, and, and I just knew that if I did, eventually it would happen. I didn't know when, and, there were, and it was, there were times that I doubted a little bit, but I really don't think I ever doubted that it would happen one day. I just didn't know when it when. would. Yeah. So it was a little bit of faith. It was definitely yes. perseverance. And I'm sure there were some rejections along the way. Oh, yes. <laughs> so tell us about those, because I think some of the viewers that come on to be, maybe be motivated, uh, their number one thought is, I don't want to be rejected. What if, what if I fail? If I tried and I fail? And of course, you know, Wayne Gretzky says, you lose 100% of the shots you don't exactly, take. Exactly, exactly. So, and Zig Ziglar says, you know, motivation, you know, they say it doesn't last, but neither does bathing. That's why we need to do it daily. <laughs> right. So it bears repeating on our show. Like, what what, what did it for you? Um, well, I think the fear of failure, that's a very real thing. And for a long time, earl earlier in my corporate career, I mean, I had that mindset. And, you know, no one wants to fail or be embarrassed. But I learned someone said, you know, one of my mentors once said to me, you know, if you don't fail, then you really haven't tried anything. And I never looked at it that way. So I knew, especially writing, I knew I was going to get a lot of rejections. I mean, there are very, very few successful authors today who can tell you, oh yeah, right away my first book. I mean, there are a couple of them, but you know, it's, they're really in the mi minority. So I learned that you have to just have a thick skin about it. And, and also, not to say, if you get rejections, if there's something good, and there were different cases where somebody may have gave me, maybe have given me a, a good piece of feedback, and then I would take that to heart. More often than not, it's it's the generic. This just isn't for us. I'm not passionate about it. And there are times. I mean, I would call my sister, or I would call my you know friends and say, yeah, or my sister-in-law got another rejection again, and you know, and they would say, yeah, you know, just keep your keep your chin up. Or I tell my husband. Um, but I just knew 
that eventually, you know, and, and I thought of Stephen King who wallpapered his office in rejections <laughs> before, <laughs> you know, so I would do that too. I would Google oh, famous authors, you know, who have been rejected and I'd read about. So I'm that. hearing humor, <laughs> have a sense yes. of humor. Oh, definitely. And I'm hearing have a great network of yes. people. Does it mean a huge network? It right. means a great network of people that you can be uh, reliant on. Yes. Would that be right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And and I think it's also showing your children, you know, both yes. sides of the scale. Yes. Not everybody gets first prize. Right. Not everybody wins, but it's how long you stay in the game. And, yes. And, and I think, you know, that's an incredible thing to do for all of our children, right? Show them that we have perseverance. Yeah. In fact, my daughter, Theo, I mean, she's been very supportive and, she, you know, she she's a, always been kind of a, d a deep thinker and you know she will she'll hear would hear a song and say mom this song reminds me of you like this fight uh -huh. song you know you're you're sticking to it and and then when I well I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves but too but when we got the news about you know the agent and the deal I mean you know both my kids were just so excited because they it's really you know, they've yeah they've seen they've seen me doing they've seen me locked up in the office with the door shut you know and writing and kind of got to leave mom alone while she's working. So I just want to backtrack a bit. Did you know you were a writer early on in your corporate marketing life or did you stumble on it? Um, I think I more stumbled on it. I mean I always loved reading and I liked telling stories and then it, my sister and I when we wrote the other one we toyed around with the idea and then I don't really have a memory of a particular moment in time that I said okay I'm now I'm gonna be a writer mm. but then once we started doing it it, it, it just it never went away. I mean, and, and those years where I wasn't doing the writing, it, w it was always there, but I was, you know, doing other things with my kids. But I, I think it took me a while to learn that no matter how busy you are, you can still find time to write. And it really wasn't until I brought a dis the discipline in that I started to become. What's the discipline? I think discipline is deciding what your priority is. So, it, you know, you can always make excuses and say, well, I've got this going on today or I'm too busy. But there's always time to write because we find time to watch that television show, right? Or to sit down and, and look at Facebook. Exa right. How much time we waste. Or we shouldn't say, I mean, it's, a, it's yeah, a, we'll I love Facebook, waste. but sometimes, yeah. So we, you, you really, you find time to do what you value. And so mm -hmm. I think once that crystallized in my mind that, yes, I'm a writer, it doesn't matter if I haven't yet achieved the commercial success. And, and, and again, success, I really think is how you define it. So if, if for one writer, success is make, is finishing, Another is self-publishing. Another is getting you know a few good reviews. Another is a commercial publishing that can evolve and change over time. But it was the commitment, and I just knew, no matter what, I was going to write. And you know, even if I could only squeeze out, an, I mean, I would take my laptop everywhere. If the kids had an eye appointment, I was there typing. Right. If I write, I just bring it. If I get my hair done, and I and and it's a habit that I've now continued to to keep, and it helps me get more done. So. Uh, I looked for the aha moment on the show. Yes. Like I looked to find where the guest or the organization had the epiphany, the aha, or that change moment. Are we there yet, or do we want to save it for segment two? No, I think we can we can okay. talk about that because I think it, it ties in with that whole idea of being a writer but not having time or you know making excuses. So because we had this one book behind us, I mean, I thought, okay, I'm an Circle author. Dance. Circle dance. And what was that about? That's the story of two Greek American sisters. It's a family saga. So it's about a really a dynamic, close-knit family. And it's sort of a, a look inside um, a second generation Greek family. So not my big fat Greek wedding, but more um, the assimilated Greeks that um, or, and, and a culture struggle between these young women between holding on to what they grew up with and the American the American way, right? Yeah. Um, so I went I signed up for this conference called Thriller Fest in New York. I, I think I read about it in Writer's Digest and I, I decided I'm gonna go by myself and my husband was very supportive. He said, Yeah, you know, I think you should go. And I was you know, walking in feeling great because I've written this book ten years ago, right? Circle dance. Circle dance. Okay. So I start meeting all of these, you know, other authors and it's a great place where there are a lot of really famous authors and they're so down to earth and helpful and, you know, everybody's approachable. So I would meet them of people in varying stages of their career, but what I noticed is a lot of them had written five, ten, fifteen, twenty books and they weren't a hundred. <laughs> so, you know, they were That's weren't, not intimidating. <laughs> yes. Five or ten, twenty books. Right. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh I'm the, so I it dawned on me, okay, you know, you need to really get moving and, and stop you know, talking about this old book. Like I was kept wanting that to be a movie, you know, it should be and my mom, you know, would always say, Oh, you know, I can't believe I haven't made that a movie. That would make the best movie. So I put that 
on the shelf and said, no, I need to move on, I need to finish the Veritas Deception, I need to build a website, I need to get involved in social media, start building up, and that, that was my aha moment, like, stop resting on your laurels, forget the past, and move forward, and, you know. At the drive, we say, we <coughs> stop telling ourselves the old story, and we drop it into, you know, high gear, yes. and we get moving. Yeah. Um, that, to me, I can relate to that, being a second, third generation Italian, and holding on to what was, and yeah. even in business, you know, holding on to what was, and trying to reshape it, and reshape it, and reshape it. Yes. So when we come back, everyone, we're going to learn about how Lynn dropped it into high gear after that aha moment, the Veritas deception, and what she's authoring now, and how she moved towards that big publisher. Uh, we love to spend this hour with you, and we're so appreciative of the time. It's The Drive here on the HN Network every Tuesday with Denise DiGregoli. It's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates your best life. Thanks for coming back. We'll be back in two minutes. Want a new experience in car buying? Scap Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram with one of the largest inventories of new two- and four-door Wranglers. We are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Come visit our new Ram Truck Center. Browse our websites, scapchryslerjeep.com or scapdodge.net to find the new Jeep, Chrysler Dodge car, minivan, or Ram truck you've been looking for. Just two miles from both I-95 or the Merritt Parkway exit 44. Save thousands right now during the Jeep Celebration Event and Ram Power Days. Now through September 30th. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport, my commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. At Mex on Main, Trumbull's very own Mexican Grill, we're all about fresh, fast, and friendly service. Our Main Street restaurant offers the best in traditional and non-traditional Mexican dishes, with only the best ingredients, never frozen. From authentic burritos, fajitas, quesadillas, and salads, we have something on the menu for everyone in the family. And enjoy our open salsa bar, giving you more ways to customize your meal. Stop in for lunch or dinner at 6528 Main Street Trumbull, or find out more at mexonmain.com. watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Pursuing a girl... A a girl. Pursuing, <laughs> <laughs> thank God we're live. Pursuing a goal takes a lot of perseverance, faith, and dedication. And we're talking with Lynn Constantine today, an author, uh, a woman that uh, co founds a consulting practice, a mom who's homeschooled, yes. a very, very busy person. And we're learning all the secrets of what it takes to be dedicated, live in faith, and just know it's going to happen. So sometimes um, our viewers tune in for motivation and also aha moments and resourcefulness. Now, right before we left, we were talking about your book, <laughs> The Veritas Deception, and the incredible work you did to get it there. Where can we find it? It's on all major online retailers, so Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, iTunes. Um, for an ebook, and then you can also get the paperback on Barnes and Noble and Amazon. And you're having some sort of signing coming um, up. Yes, yeah, so at Barnes and Noble, I believe it's October 27th. Right. Yes. So that's sort that's of right. an aha day for any author, right? That you're at Barnes and Noble, you're right. having a signing. But tell us, how did you get there? It, it, tell us the process, because I think sure. people tune in to say, 
How, if she did it, I might be able to do it. How did she do it? Absolutely. Give us the how-tos. So when I finally did finish it after I had gone to the Thriller Fest, it took me about another um, year to finally finish the book. And um, I started pitching it. I was going to try to go the traditional route with it. So that involves sending queries to agents and trying to get a publisher. And I got a lot of great feedback on the book and, and, and serious consideration from some agents. But ultimately, um, they didn't take it. So I was going to. I How many queries did you send? Oh, probably 50 over okay. the course of a year. Not all at once, but over the course of the year. And I had also gone to Pitch Fest at Thriller Fest. They have the opportunity. So that's more than three a month. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. with that's email. I mean, work. luckily with email, like back in the days of Circle Dance, it was snail mail. That was a lot harder. But it, it's still they're inundated. I mean, some agents may get two, three, four thousand emails a week querying them. I mean, so and and they also have their job of dealing with their clients. So. It's, it's extraordinarily difficult to get a literary agent. I mean, you can, it, it, it takes, it can take, you know, years and some people never achieve that. So that's, I mean, they have to be very selective because they don't have a lot of time, you know, right. and, and they need to make sure that whatever they're buying, even if it's good, they have to know whether it's going to sell. So the Veritas Deception was a little bit tricky because there is a strong element of faith in it. I mean, I, you know, this is a book that was a long time coming that I felt inspired to write. Um, and so it's not, I mean, some may call it Christian fiction. Other people say, oh, no, I don't see a Christian fiction at all. I see it as conspiracy, but. I didn't see it as Christian fiction. Okay, so, but, but you know. But I could see how someone could construe Could see that, that yeah. right. So I think um, for that reason, you know, it really didn't fit into any little box. And so I decided that I was going to give it a year, and if it didn't get picked up, that I was going to do it myself. So you gave yourself a timeline. I I'm did. going to do these 50 queries, right. and then if um, it doesn't go in a year, what are you doing? I, th right. Then I decided I'm going to use my own marketing background. I'm going to publish it myself, but I'm going to do it professionally. I'm going to get an editor. I'm, you know, I'm not going to just throw it out on the, on the market. So again, another connection I had made through Thriller Fest was, is another author, Anthony France, who um, has written some some legal thrillers, and he also was the editor of their um, online magazine. So he's read tons of thrillers. So I had him read it, and like two days before I was going to start a pub, I did a um, a publishing a campaign to raise like crowdfunding. I thought, let me try my hat at, at this because I wanted to raise money to get an, a quality New York editor. And he said to me, I really think this is good, and I still think you should try, tr you know, traditional. But I think you could benefit from some structural editing and he referred me to Jamie Levine who is the, the fantastic editor who edited this book and so I met her at Thriller Fest the following year she was doing some freelance she so we met she read the book and she gave me a 50 page editorial letter of <laughs> some research some things yeah <laughs> she's she gave you homework <laughs> she gave me homework she said I've got a lot of work for you so after I kind of picked my jaw up off the floor and I brought the letter home. I sent it to my sister. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Careful but, what you wish for. Right, right. But I, I knew she was right and I took a few days to just kind of think about it and then I embarked on this next year of, of going through and adding, you know, you talked about how the intricacies, um, a lot of that is, is thanks to Jamie and but it required a lot more research and a lot more writing and, and rewriting. So when she so it wasn't ready when you wanted it to be ready is it, what I'm hearing. Yes, exactly. And I can be impatient too. Like when yes. I say it's ready, I want it to be ready. Yep. And then someone will tell me, "Oh no, Denise, we need yeah. to reevaluate it." And so, what do you do at that juxtaposition to settle yourself down and take that advice? Well, I figured, you know, she had she had edited like 20 or 25 bestsellers, okay. and uh, so I knew that I was in good hands. Right. And she was a really um, hands-on editor as well so what she didn't just say here and leave me alone I mean I, I did a lot of work back and forth she came to my house and we sat for uh, 18 um, well from I think 12 in the afternoon until midnight wow. talking about the changes and okay if we do this then this so she really you know did a great job and helped me with it and it took like I said another maybe six or seven months when she said okay now it's ready then I had to have a copy edit done which is really looking at just wor you know, the, the wording and the way that the structure of the sentences and are you using cliches and, and this and that. And she actually became, uh, took a position as a publisher of a firm, so she couldn't do it, so she referred me to another wonderful editor named Gretchen Stelter. So she did the copy edit on the book. Mm -hmm. So now it's, I don't know, May or June. And I thought, so again, I could still pitch it. I was still going to try to go now, now that I've done all these changes, but I couldn't wait a whole other year. I just couldn't. 
put myself through another year of again another time uh, like you said. exactly I, and I just didn't want I thought I'm gonna give it a few months and I'm gonna see but I don't emotionally I needed to be done with this book I had just had too much too much and um, and I had even you know I had become friendly another great author who's wonderful is David Morrell and I was e talking to him about it and he said you know I think unless you get picked up by someone huge I think you can do just as good of a job doing it yourself and I think you're again I think you're ready to let this book go so again again nothing no one picked it up and I said alright I'm gonna go with it so we did the cover design and, and by August and I chose August 10th because my mom passed away a year and a half ago and that's her birthday so I wanted it to come out so that way every year on her birthday it wouldn't feel you know I would feel like I had this to, to think about you know some new growth some new growth and she was always so supportive of, of everything all of her you know all her children do so it came out on the 10th um, and oh there were some things that happened along the way you talked about um, we were talking about serendipity and at Thriller Fest I got some great endorsements from other authors and um, friends of mine were saying I, I really think you should see if Steve Barry would like to would endorse it because he writes these wonderful historical thrillers and I know him, but not very well. I felt a little awkward. So I was talking to David Morrell, and Steve happened to be sitting next to him, and I had the book with it. It wasn't printed yet, but I had the galley for it. And Steve picked the book up and started looking through it. He said, oh, this looks really interesting. I'd be happy to do a, bl a blurb for you if you would like. I mean, so it was, it was just really, you know. So chance favors the prepared mind, and then the serendipity right. events came in. Um, I, again, it feels to me like you put yourself out there in the right place and then sort of things lined up for you. And you just kept your eye open every waking turn. Yes. And was, you were positive. And I think part of life is being really positive about whatever it is you're doing. And there's a little bit, for me at least, that fake it till you make it, right? You might yes, not be so yeah. positive because you right. could be feeling awkward. Sure. But you're, you're, you know, the better side of you is that positive person. And when, when you kind of are trying to start a new venture for those that are listening and thinking about starting a new venture I think that's an important quality to embrace like don't lose your verve absolutely yeah I, yeah, I really agree with that and I feel you know and as you mentioned before there's also the element of faith I mean I felt like that whole weekend this was just this past July you know when all of these things started to happen and come together after years of preparation and prayer and everything and I did I was like I felt like God was going before me and just kinda of going let me open this door let me open that door it was really incredible that is incredible so, yeah so you get to the point where he's writing the blurb then what uh, so that's now on the book so I you know I I also um, had some authors offer to do giveaways in I did a, blog, a virtual blog tour with a partners in crime so different um, bloggers wrote about it and different people reviewed it and we did contests and different you know people are tweeting and retweeting and sharing on social media and then all the people that had participated in my crowdfunding as well I sent them the books so a lot of them have reviewed it and re you know recommended it to their friends um, I did a pre-order before it came out and, and we got you know some nice buzz going with that that's great yeah, yeah so so now you know so it's out there I feel like it's you know kind of like almost giving birth I now it's there and it's really got to stand on its own and you know and and do whatever it's gonna do so we'll see I have I have high hopes you know for it well I uh, you know a, a shameless plug here I think it's fabulous <laughs> and I recommend anyone that's uh, viewing to take a if you need a thriller fiction this is a great one thank you so I want to talk about the book is out there and you're still doing your consulting business tell yes. me a little bit yes. about that um, so I do social media consulting I started off doing it more broadly for small business or you know any kind of industry but it's now m most of my clients are other authors who are looking to build their their social media following either on Twitter or on Facebook and um, I really kind of take manage it for them so I manage their growth I, I make sure that their their Twitter following is growing every month I tweet for them I'll do you know help them with promotions for their books um, and you know and that's essentially you know what takes it off of their is there any shoulder. Is, is there any secret to someone that's growing their business as to how to make the Twitter following grow in your opinion well I think you have to you know know who you want to follow so and again it depends on the industry for writers the writing community is very supportive it, it, and, and so typically if you follow most of the time if you follow a writer unless again it's Stephen King or you know <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna follow you back he um, so that you know I would say just to, to figure out what your goals are and that's the other thing I do is I sit down and we figure out what are you looking to get out of it are you looking to you know just for the not just for the numbers but are you looking to connect with maybe 
book reviewers, book bloggers, are there certain authors you want to connect with? You know, how do you get their attention without being obnoxious, that kind of thing. Do you find it's, it's easier to give advice to your clients than it is to your own self and your own marketing? I used to, yes. Okay. But I, I, find it's, it, I, I think the great thing about social media, it takes a little bit of that away because you're not sitting you know you're not sitting in a bookstore yelling hey you know come buy my book you can you can promote yourself but you're not you don't have to see you know to see the other person face to face so that has helped me to be more self promoting i did used to feel that way yeah i think that's a common yeah. for entrepreneurs yeah. a common feeling right i help you but to help myself is yeah. just a little bit different yeah. we have to push ourselves out of uh, our comfort yeah. zone yeah yeah well uh, we're going to take a quick break okay uh, we'll be right back guys gals, yeah. everybody that's viewing. Uh, we're so thankful you've joined us here today on the HN Network at The Drive. It's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates the life you live. We hope that you find good fuel here and that you'll join us for the final segment when we talk about the next book and how she got that big New York uh, publisher to pick her up, which I think is just a fascinating story. So be right back in a couple minutes. Thanks, friends. I'm a filthy rich executive. I hear the markets down a million points. I freak out. I spill my large espresso. The searing pain makes me slam on the brakes. Uh-oh, your fault. And your cut rate insurance may not cover my $90,000 car, so I sue you, because that's what I do. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Visit your local Allstate agent, Nick Montanero, at 6528 Main Street in Trumbull for a personalized quote. As you're getting back to your regular schedules, we're excited to get back to doing what we do best, offering you the freshest seasonal fare and all the ingredients for a healthy start to school. So shop Walter Stewart's for everything fresh, from A, apples to Z, zucchini, and from cotton candy grapes to back-to-nature all-natural snack bags. We save you time by stocking all of your favorite back-to-school essentials under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Washington Prime, now open on Main Street in Georgetown. Come enjoy our relaxed setting, excellent service, award-winning nightly happy hours, and feast on our creative new American cuisine. Connecticut Magazine's winner for best steak, Washington Prime of Georgetown. The leaves are changing, water temps dropping, and the sun is setting a little earlier each day. But there's still a lot of great boating, fishing, and coast time left before we see the first snow. And above all, remember, it's always summer at the Dock Shop. With loads of new fishing tackle and accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor, the Dock Shop is just what you need when you start to feel that New England autumn chill. Boater, beach bum, fishermen, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, DockShop.com. At Elements Massage Ridgefield, we believe in quality services that are affordable and focused on therapy and healing. The licensed massage therapists are available seven days a week, offering deep tissue and Swedish massage, as well as prenatal and couples massage. Special introductory rates are available now, or try our Elements trademarked wellness program. For more information, contact Elements Massage Ridgefield at 203-403-3348 or visit elementsmassage.com backslash Ridgefield. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. The best thing you can do is tune in every Tuesday and motivate yourself by listening to the guests, the people, the ideas, and the organizations on the drive that will hopefully, hopefully move you forward. Today we're talking to Lynn Constantine, uh, author, business owner, mom and entrepreneur yes and we're talking about her your life as a book author bringing through so many incarnations now up to the most recent project yes. which is what um, and this is like we're officially able to talk about it now yes okay. yes we are so uh, my sister and i have written after circle dance we wrote two more books and the second one which is the working title now is Middle Game, is going to be published by HarperCollins. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're very, very excited. So that, um, that all came to be just this summer through um, 
when we, again, at Thriller Fest, we found out we had submitted it to about four agents. And um, we were hoping this one agent that was referred, we referred to from the editor. Remember, I had told you about the one editor referred me to another editor. So um, she referred us to Victoria Sanders' agency, and the agent is um, Bernadette Baker Bowman. And we hadn't yet met her, but she was good friends with our editor. And when she was helping us with this book, was what I learned, again, was that you need an editor, no matter how good your writing is. So before we were going to start submitting this one, we hired Gretchen again to do the copy edit. And she said, I really think this would be up right up Bernadette's alley. It's exactly the kind of book that they like. I mean, it's not at all the same story, of course, of a, of a Gone Girl, but it's a domestic thriller along those, uh, along those lines. So um, we sent it to Bernadette, and she, you know, and I told her, of course, that Gretchen and Jamie had recommended it. So she said, yeah, I'd love to take a look at it. It sounds terrific. And then I realized she was going to be at Thriller Fest. This was maybe a week before the conference. So I emailed her and said, oh, by the way, my sister and I are going to be there. Maybe we could meet. And she wrote back and said, oh, that would be, you know, it would be terrific. I'd love to meet. I'll try to read it sooner then. So as the days are coming, I'm waiting every day, hoping to get an email saying, oh, I'm reading it and I'm loving it. Because yeah. usually if, if an agent likes it, you do hear more quickly. Um, and the three of the other agents were not interested in it for whatever reason. So you got three no's. We got three no's, and I knew these other agents, and too. And you were banking so, on the one yes. And I was banking on and I was really thinking they were all going to love it and fight over it. We just kind of, this was the book that my sister and I kept saying, this is the book. We this just, is it. This is it. We just know, we just know this is the right, this is the one. So we started thinking, are we crazy? Maybe, you know, maybe this isn't the right one. So Jamie, the editor of Veritas, who's also friends with Bernadette, um, a small community, she was at Thriller Fest, and we were having coffee together and hanging out a little bit. And Bernadette had said, I'll text you, text me Thursday, and we'll find a time to meet. So Thursday is also when they have Pitch Fest, which is like 50 agents that are there. And we weren't planning on doing it if Bernadette was going to take it, but we didn't know whether she was going to take it or not. And so, again, I kept thinking, well, if she liked it, she would have told me by now. So Valerie and I were both, my sister, were both kind of expecting, she was just going to be polite and meet me in person just to say, oh, sorry, but no thanks. So I was with Jamie. Jamie was having lunch with her that day. Bernadette was going to call me after her lunch with Jamie. So before Jamie left, I said, well, I guess I'm going to sign up for Pitch Fest because I haven't heard from Bernadette. And what is Pitch Fest? Pitch Fest is um, it's like speed dating for authors. So you get three minutes with an agent. There, there are three rooms full of literary agents, and you pay for it. You sign up, and you get to give them your pitch. And then if they like it, they like say... Like a query letter? It's like a query letter in person. Okay. So, yeah, if they like it, then they give you their card and say, okay, send me either Whatever, that manuscript or, yeah. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for a face-to-face. -face. So I said to Jamie, I really don't want to have to go pitch, but I guess I'm going to have to because I can't text Bernadette and say, hey, do you like it or not? So I'm preparing my pitch. I, I'm about to go pay for it, and I get a text on my phone from Jamie, and she says, I'm having lunch with Bernadette right now, and you don't have to go to Pitch Fest if you don't want to with a little smiley face. So it was that I, could, that I can still see standing you know, in my hotel room. So I walk down, and I tell my sister, and we, we meet Bernadette, maybe 20 minutes later, in the lobby of the Hyatt. And, um, you know, she says, I love, oh, I love your book. I, you know, I love your character. And we'd like to offer you representation. So and I, you lost your mind? I said, we'd like to take, we'd like to accept. <laughs> so it was wonderful. I mean, and all of our friends, you know, were there, were, were congratulating us through the whole weekend. And it just, we were on cloud nine the whole time. So she said to us, well, I'll be in touch after, uh, you know, after the weekend. We're going into August, so more likely than not, we won't start pitching it until September because the publishing industry is pretty much dead in August. So she called me two or three days later and said, can, you, can we have a quick call? And she said, Victoria, um, the, the, her boss and the, the owner, she wants to go out right away. She thinks it's really strong. We're going to go out to like 30 different editors on Friday. So we said, great. Um, this was five days after she signed us. The sixth day, she called us and said, we have a preemptive offer from HarperCollins. They loved it. And so, you know, we took it <laughs> and we signed up with them. Yeah. And so now what's happening after this? So now we will get, um, we, we met our editor. We had lunch with, with her. She's wonderful, Emily Griffin. And we'll be getting, she's working on the edits. So they'll, she'll come back to us and let us know, you know, what we need to work on. And then it'll be a process over the next year. It won't come out until 2018, so it, it takes a little bit, which, of course, again, patience is the word that I'm having to really hold on to. That's through. your mantra? Yes, becoming my mantra. Never give up and be patient are the two things. So, yeah, so that way there will be plenty of time for design. But we should hopefully have our um, gal you know, our advanced reader copies 
next July. So at Thriller Fest this year, we should be able to, we'll be there with our, with, with a preview of the book, which will be really exciting. So if you were going to offer a tip or a piece of advice to our viewers on a goal they were pursuing, whether it be writing a book or starting a business or changing a relationship, what would be your three go-to things to move them forward? Um, I would say write it, write it down, break it down into manageable goals that you can do every day and write that down. French, he did not <laughs> even use the daily drive yet. Right. Wow, yeah. that yes. is really great. Okay. Write it down because then, you know, if you write it down, you're so much more likely and to do it. Right. So I would say, yes, break it down, write you're it gonna down. You're going to be in my commercial. There write you go. Down, write it, it down. down and then do it, you know, and, and, you know, make a commitment. Honor your commitment to yourself as much as you honor it to other people because it, it's really important. So integrity. That. Yes. And I, and I would add to that, when you write it down and you go to do it and you don't do it on a day, don't give up. Exactly. Forgive go yourself. Back. Yes. And move go on. back. Yeah. So, um, busy person, how do you relax? I watch some, uh, a lot of, not bad, some great TV and some, you know, some junky bad, TV. some junky TV. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm definitely after dinner, sit by the TV and just unplug person. We are lucky enough to live by the beach, so um, we'll take, I like to take a walk with our, I have a golden retriever who loves to go out and gets very excited when you say the word walk. So we'll do that, I go to the gym, um, talk with friends, hang out, and read, of course, I love to read, so. And if we were to have you back, and we certainly will, where are we gonna see you in five years from now? Where were you casting that net? Well, I hopefully in five years I'll have five more books because that's the plan is to do a book a year, um, and hopefully, and I hope that they'll all be doing very well and to have some bestsellers at that point. I have found our conversation just fascinating and motivating okay. to me. So I'm going to assume it's motivating to those that are watching us. Now, if they want to find you, how are they finding you? Um, my website is the best place because it has all my social media links, plus I, you, people can email me there as well. So okay, and it is? LynnConstantine.com. Okay, did we, can we put that up? It's up, all right. Um, I hope that you'll join us again next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Or at the very latest in 2018 when the book comes out. I would love to. And tell us again what's happening. Thanks Thank you. so Thank much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming It was a pleasure. On. Thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, guys. As we started the show, I'm going to end the show with pick your potato and make sure you use your, vote, your voice to vote. <laughs> Please get out there and vote. Um, you can join us here on The Drive every Tuesday live, or you can find us on demand later at han.network. If you'd like to be on the show or you have a friend that you think would be great for the show, please tweet us at HAN Network CT. Thanks so much. We'll see you next Tuesday.